I burned the ships and I burned friendships that didn't need to be burned and hurt a lot of people in the process. I had never, I've never publicly talked about that. And I'm at a place now where I feel like I can and not get emotional about it. Hello and welcome to Crafted Entrepreneur. This is actually gonna be part four of the 36 reflections on my 36 years. I've had so much fun recording this quick series for you all in the middle of summer. Maybe you're listening to this in the winter, but I'm in a bucket hat on YouTube and I'm doing the dang thing because I love speaking life over you, helping you have a new perspective, helping you achieve your goals, And, you know, I'm doing it today in a bucket hat because I've been at the beach and I'm like, but we're getting it done because there's no excuses. So we're going to number 30. Number 30, saying no is how you get to your yes life. What does that mean? Saying no is how you get to your yes life. You've got to say no to the things that don't matter. You've got to say no to the people who are the energy drainers, who are the takers, who don't really give much to you. And, you know, they just constantly drain your battery. You've got to start saying no to those types of people. You've got to say no to your staff when they want to take time from you that is not income producing and it's because they have bad habits. You've got to say no to that. You've got to say no to trips and vacations sometimes that don't make sense because you're in that busy season of life. You know, Chase and I, we laugh at ourselves because we are financially free. We've been financially free, you know, since our early 30s. And we don't have to do the things we're doing. I don't have to be recording this podcast right now, right? Chase doesn't have to be traveling to New York right now like he is. But he's doing it because... We are driven by our potential. We want to see what we are truly capable of. And that's just, and we want to show that to our kids. You know, it's extremely important for us to show us living out our just like capacity, right? Like really seeing, are you capable of doing this? Like, can you do this? Or are you just a one hit wonder? Like that's important to us, right? And so this summer has been so different because last year we spent it in Italy. And this summer we've gone on one vacation that lasted three days and Chase was on calls the entire time. And we just had a conversation like, hey, like if that's what this summer is gonna be, let's just stay home and we'll save money. You know, we'll have fun. I love being in my little bubble in Newport Beach. I mean, I could never leave Newport Beach again in my life and I would be happy. Like, honestly, that's how much I love where I live. And, and he's just in that season where he is building, 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 and he needs to be home. He needs to have a routine, needs to go work out. And we are just like making it happen with him today. And, uh, it's fun. It's not, we're not like necessarily living out. Oh my gosh. The laptop lifestyle of working anywhere, because it's just not realistic to have three kids and all of their dreams and all those things. Right. So We're saying no to the vacations and to the extra things right now because it just makes more sense for him as he's on Zoom call after Zoom call, making his fintech company a reality and it's doing so well. I'm so freaking proud of him, you know? So, but we're saying no and we're totally okay with it because we know where we're going to be in five years. Like we know what we're building to when the kids are adults. Like Cooper's going to be 18 in five years and that's when hopefully we're traveling to go see him when he's in the junior league for hockey. Right. And we're like going to be traveling all over the world and we're not going to be able to be on zoom call after zoom call in five years because that's what we're building. So think about that for you. Where do you need to say no? Where do you need to say no? So that way you can start saying yes to your dreams. 31. Oh, this is so good. I feel like there's been several things about people because people will make you or break you you know, and you could be the strongest person, but if you're in the wrong environment, 
your environment is made up of the people you surround yourself with, you will go backwards. So number 31 is stay away from people who take you backwards. It's like pretty simple. But I had this situation happen with an old friend. And, you know, there's something about being around old friends. They just feel comfortable, right? They're like, hey, you have seen me through it all and you love me no matter what. Like, you know, you think that, right? Like in your mind, you think that they love you. And, you know, you think that it feels good because comfort feels good. You don't have to change. It doesn't require growth. You can say the exact same and people will accept you. So when you hang out with people who are just a little bit too familiar with you and you hang out with them often, you just get stuck in your comfort zone. You just honestly do. You, you start to go, well, do I really need to chase after my potential? Do I really need to go and do these things? And they even question you. They say, hey, you've done a lot of things in your life. Aren't you good? Don't you just want to enjoy life right now? Because those are the people that don't understand you enjoy life by running after your dreams. Like that is part of enjoyment for you. <laughs> That's a joy-filled life. So you've got to practice limited association with them. You've got to say, hey, where I'm going, it requires me to have zero distractions. And so I've got to be really careful about who I spend time with. Do you want to say something? Do you want to say something on a podcast? Oh, he likes the microphone, guys. First of all, I cannot believe I'm coming, becoming a dog person that I can't even put my puppy down to do this podcast. Okay, so number 32, be the bank. Be the bank. Going to do a whole webinar on this in September, so stay tuned. But look into alternative assets like my cash advance indication. So again, this is like one of those things that like you wish you would have got these 36 lessons when you're 18, okay? But that's not how life works and you learn as you go but you can also learn from Kayla. And you wanna look for ways to be your own bank. Right now, your any money that is sitting in your bank, okay, especially in a savings account, your bank is leveraging that to give out loans to other people. Whether it be a commercial loan, a residential loan, a car loan, those are three examples, but they're using your money. They're saying, hey, well, we have billion dollars in liquid cash right now. And so we, we feel comfortable loaning you this money to buy a home. And they're using your money. This isn't like the CEO's personal money. This is your money that they are leveraging. And you're letting them do it. And you're making 0% out of that. You're just getting to house your money into a bank. So when you start to realize that you can be the bank and you can lend out money and make a profit, off of it. That's where the infinite banking comes in. That's where, you know, a high yield savings account comes in. You know, those are like lower examples, but with like our cash advance indication, we make 25% on the money that we would normally hold in savings. It is now in our cash advance indication. We make 25% on average annually doing nothing. Like we don't do anything with that. It's, we just, we treat it literally like a savings. We haven't had to pull out of it you know, but anytime I have extra money that's not going into a normal investment model, like my, my real estate stuff, it's going over there. Like I, I'll, sometimes I'll just put an extra hundred bucks. I'll just go, oh, I have an extra hundred. I'm going to put it in there because I know it's going to grow by 25%. So, and what we're doing inside of our cash advance indication is we're giving it, we're giving small business loans to people in all different types of industries. So it's a very lucrative business and we're helping people at the same time. So banks, like bigger banks wouldn't give these small businesses loans because they're too risky. Number 33, build a powerful personal brand that creates a community. Now, I am obsessed with community. And one of the things I can proudly say is that every community I've built, people find their best friends in it. People find their people in it. Like in M3 right now, in my mastermind, these women are incredible at supporting each other. One of the girls created a product and everybody bought it because they just to support. And that's the type of community I create because I teach that. I bleed that into the culture, support, support, support. Like even if you don't have the money to buy the product, share a post, like do something, help a sister out. And that's what really happens. So you want to have a brand. Like you want to be a brand. You want to be able to monetize it. How do you bring the people that are your audience together? You 
can do a Facebook group. You can, you know, have a name for them back in the day, dude, I didn't understand the branding world, but I called everybody Kayla's rock stars and we were in a Facebook group and everybody wanted to be Kayla's rock star. And (laughs) it sounds so silly now because I know better, but that's people were excited. They did want to be Kayla's rock star. So you create this excitement around it and you show them the, the good things that come from being a part of your community. And then people will be lifers for you. Number 34, the answer to your problem is who, not how. And I did a whole podcast on this, so you can go check it out. I'm not going to go into depth here, but I want you to remember, go back to principle 29. Your network is everything. So who are you building up today? Who are you helping out today? Who are you encouraging? Whose posts are you sharing today? Whose business are you supporting by buying their products? Right? Who, who, who? Because the law of reciprocity is at play. And eventually when people feel like you've done a lot for them, they want to do something for you. And you know, that might be tomorrow. It might be five years from now. You never know, but the law of reciprocity is at play. So use it wisely. Number 35, look for confirmation in the Holy Bible only. Oh my goodness. I'm going to talk about one of the biggest mistakes and hopefully I don't get emotional because This is one of those things that when I talk about the enemy, he likes to rear his ugly head with this mistake I made. And I didn't realize this was a mistake until recently. But I was angry at the CEO of my old network marketing company. I was angry at the CEO and at the founder. And there had been some really like hurtful messages texted to me by the founder of the company as I was building Mommy Millionaire. And they really, really hurt me. And I just started to go like, oh, I hate everything about this company. Like, yeah, it changed my life and I'm grateful, but I, I can't stand to look at it one more second. And I wasn't in the right headspace with the Lord. Like I wasn't seeking relationship with the Lord. I didn't understand strongholds at that time. And I was just really like let anger take over me. I had reached out to the CEO and she kind of blew me off. And I was like, who do you think you are to blow me off? Like, okay, pride. Hello. So I had pride going on. I had anger going on and I was mad. So that was, there was a whole storm happening. Well, then my friend you know, introduces me to an opportunity. And the opportunity was great. Would I have taken it had I been so angry? No, absolutely not. I wouldn't have because I already had a good thing going. Okay. I was making, you know, $13,000 a week doing absolutely nothing. And everybody was happy. Okay. So the thing that really like, I thought this was a sign in my mind at the time, I thought this is a sign I need to leave was one of my good friends that I had built with. She was my upline, posted the top earners in a Facebook group and she left me off the list. And I knew I was number one, but she left me off the list because I wasn't actively building and she didn't want to, whatever, you know, she wanted to give credit to the people who were working it. And, you know, I used to do the same thing when I was building, but to me, I was like, oh, heck no. That's the sign. I need to freaking leave. I'm not valued here. What do we do when we're not valued? We make bad decisions. So instead of going to prayer, instead of opening up my Bible, I went to people to look for confirmation that this is what I was supposed to do, that I was supposed to leave, that I was supposed to walk away from it all, cut ties, freaking burn the ships. And I ended up burning the freaking ships. And, you know, it's one of those things where, I burned the ships and I burned friendships that didn't need to be burned and hurt a lot of people in the process. And it's one of those things where I can't regret it because I did what I did, you know, and I'm in a better place now. And I think it, it was going to happen at some point. Did it need to happen like that? No, but I, it's one of those things where I'm like, gosh, you know, if I would have been seeking the Bible for confirmation, Hey, be at peace with all men at all times. 
I wouldn't have done it that way. Hey, pride comes before the fall. What does God say about anger in the Bible? It will kill you. It will destroy you. Anger is not of the Lord. So there was a lot of things that if I would have stuck with 35, looked for confirmation in the Holy Bible, I wouldn't have done that. And I would have saved myself so much heartache, a year filled with depression, a lawsuit, like all of the things. So I had never, I've never publicly talked about that. And I'm at a place now where I feel like I can and not get emotional about it because I've also forgiven myself for making that decision. And I've forgiven all people involved in it. And I've even asked for forgiveness from the one person that I really felt like I needed to apologize to and moved on with my life. But it's still one of those things where I don't know if I'll ever look at it and be like, that was good news. Like, (laughs) so I know there's gonna be questions like, well, what do you feel like you going to another network marketing company was a bad thing? I think who I went with was the bad thing. And it really, now I'm not doing it, you know, because like who you do life with and who you build a business with matters so, so much. And I just, that's one of the things I just won't compromise is working with people I don't like. At this point in my life, I won't do it. I don't care how much money I'm going to make. I will not do it. I've got to like the person. I've got to believe in the person. And I just personally don't believe in that upline over there. So, and that's not to be gossipy or catty at all. It's just, it is what it is. Like I can't, I can't fake it. And so now also I believe and even finding confirmation in the Bible, be the lender, not the borrower. I believe me coming together with Chase and building what we're building now and what he's specifically building is exactly what God wanted me to do. And did it all have to happen this way? No, but God prospers your mistakes, Deuteronomy 28. And, you know, that's what's happened. It's like, okay, everything has been blessed still because I have moved forward, repented, and really gone on the right track. And I just believe where I'm going, I can't be affiliated with any network marketing company with where I'm going because it will repel my audience. And so now people knowing like, hey, Kayla is, she's not affiliated with anything. So she doesn't have any bias in anything she's teaching or coaching. She's really helping all people. That's only going to expand the brand even more with Crafted Entrepreneur. And I'm really excited. So it had to happen. Number 36. This is so good. Forgive quickly and say sorry often. And this one, I really want you to take home, like pray about it, think about it, write out people you need to forgive. Because when you hold on, to unforgiveness. When you have those bitter roots in your heart, you're opening yourself up to dangerous things. Like honestly, you are opening yourself up to bad spirits. And I realized honestly that the person I needed to forgive the most was myself. Because if you're a high achiever, in which I feel like I know a lot of you are that are listening in right now. But when you're a high achiever, you are very, very self-critical. And when you're self-critical, guess what happens? You are just constantly looking for things you messed up on and you constantly just continue to bring it up to yourself. So you got to forgive yourself. And then you got to forgive others because when you get really good at forgiving other people, you can live free. And I wanted to share with you this prayer of forgiveness that I keep handy. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> that little anger root in Kayla, it can come up real quick if uh, I'm not taking care of myself, okay? But my, my pastor, Kathy Greer, said this. Lord, as an act of my will, I choose to forgive blank, 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 okay? For what he, she, they did to my loved ones or me. I choose to no longer direct hate, anger, or bitterness towards him, her, or them. I choose to let go of the hurt and not dwell on the offense anymore. I choose to turn away from vengeful acts and thoughts. You are their judge. Jesus, please forgive me as I forgive others. Every hurt that has ever been done to me, please heal that hurt. Every hurt that I have ever caused to another person, please heal that hurt. 
Please remove bitterness and pain from my heart and heal me in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. I command all evil spirits who had legal rights to me due to unforgiveness to leave me now and to go into the abyss in Jesus's name. Whew. That prayer is so powerful. Okay. And if you want the prayers from that book, just DM me freedom and I'll send you the link. You guys can get the book. So what's so extremely powerful about that is I was holding so much judgment towards people. I had, I had forgot about it. I had asked Lord, who else do I need to forgive? I came up with 70 names and that's probably because I'm I talked to a lot of people <laughs> and I didn't realize like I was holding things against them and boom. So now as soon as it comes up where I feel like, oh, I feel like I have been wronged. I just say that prayer immediately. I'm like, no, that's not going to take root in my heart. I am not going to live in offense. I am done. And I just say, sorry, quickly. You know, I just say, sorry, quickly. I learned, you know, last year I, I hurt somebody that mattered to me. I hurt their feelings and she wanted to have a conversation and I said, sorry. I said, you know what? That was not what I meant. I am so sorry. I would never, if I could take back and and do it differently, I would, because you mean a lot to me and I'm so sorry. And she was like, wow, I did not think you were going to respond like that. Like, I did not think this is how that conversation was going to go. I thought you were going to be defensive. And I was like, yeah, maybe a few years ago that Kayla would have been defensive, but me now, like, no, like if I hurt somebody's feelings, I'm going to say sorry. Like, even if if I could sit there and justify all the things and I could say I did nothing wrong, I'm just going to say sorry because it's easier. I don't want to offend people and I don't want to be offended by people. I just want to live right and I want to live in peace with people. You have so much more freedom. That is true abundance. And if you're struggling with that at all, right, like letting go of things, remember in the Bible, talks about forgiveness. Go and just go, look for it yourself in the index of the Bible. Talk, look up forgiveness and see what God has to say about it and come to your own conclusions about it. But this is something that has completely set me free in my relationships, in my life, while building a personal brand. I used to take so much personally on social media. Now I'm just like, oh, I forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. I forgive them. It's all good. I'm not going to let that sit in my heart because the only person that gets hurt when you're holding on to grudges and bitterness is you. It ages you. It causes cancer. It causes diseases. You don't want any of that. You want to be free. So let it go and let yourself off the hook as well. Learn from your mistakes and move forward. Oh, wow. I didn't know today was going to be a sermon, but I cannot stress how important that is, like even in your business. Because when you're in the business, you're working with people and people are not perfect and people are going to make mistakes, right? And you've got to learn how to just go, you know what? I'm going to be undefendable because I know that most of the time people have good intentions. Most of the time people are not trying to do something shady. Most of the time people are not trying to hurt their feelings. Most of the time people are just living with their own trauma. and they do things because they haven't healed. And so I'm just going to let it go. Am I going to let every person that offends that, you know, does offensive things in my life? No, I'm not going to let them in my inner circle, but I'm not going to let it ruin my day. I'm just going to let it go. So I hope you loved this. I hope you enjoyed and thought of in your own life, the reflections, maybe it makes a really great post for you on your birthday, the 36 reflections on my 36 years. I want to see it for all of your years on your birthday. Make it super fun. We'll make a whole community out of it, out of those crafted entrepreneurs. So we're going to do another episode very soon with Chase and I. We're going to talk all things cash, money, and being the bank. So I can't wait for you to listen into that. Bye.